at the behest of Tom Clark of the Irish Republican Brotherhood. A committee was immediately put together which read like a who's who of Irish revolution. Eleven of the members of that committee were to go on and participate in the 1916 Rising and to be executed for their part in the Rising. The cortege crossed the Atlantic. It came to Ireland through Liverpool and as our Liverpool friends and comrades have highlighted in the past week, in order that O'Donovan Ross's coffin would not touch English soil, the coffin was actually carried for two miles between one ship and another before being brought here to Dublin. The coffin of O'Donovan Ross arrived here in our city on the 27th of July 1915. There was a high mass in the Crow Cathedral and then the body was brought here to City Hall, to Lyon State. O'Donovan Russell lay in state in Dublin City Hall, guarded by a guard of honour of the Irish Volunteers and the Irish Citizen Army. Thousands of people filed past in the succeeding days, and a huge tribute was paid even before the funeral procession. When the coffin and the remains were welcomed here in the City Hall, the man chosen to give the oration was a, a young priest originally from County Roscommon and serving in County Sligo in a place called Tiffany. That man was Father Michael O'Flanagan. He lived to a great old age. His name had already grown into Irish history when most of us were boys. He was hated by the enemies of Irish nationality. But the measure of their hatred is the measure of our love. He was a criminal in the eyes of the English government, but his crimes are his title deed to sainthood in Ireland's patriot city. A few days ago, our brothers beyond the Atlantic carried his body with love and reverence to the edge of the ocean. Many of the leading Irish citizens of the states were there to testify to their admiration of his life and their adhesion to the principles for which he lived and suffered. We have received him into Ireland in the same spirit of unity and brotherhood. Many who have been estranged by the extraordinary occurrences of the past year or two will be brought together again over the body of our hero. We love the name of O'Donovan Rasa and we purpose to place his remains amongst those of the noblest of the uncrowned kings of Ireland because he typifies to us the spirit of patriotism, the passion of patriotism and the virtue of patriotism. Love of country, love of Ireland means more than its love of its hills and its valleys its rugged mountains and broad plains, and the sunshine and shower that cross its sweet and tender face. All that is contained in love of country, but love of country contains much more. That is but the physical setting of our patriotism. Love of country, above all things, means the love of its people. We love O'Donovan Rasa because he was true to the end, to the principles of his boyhood. And the same love which O'Donovan Rasa had, and which survived six years of brutal treatment in English prisons, remained with him to the end of his life. The men of Ireland should make it clear that the principles of nationality are no less sacred by the shores of the Atlantic than they are along the slopes of the Carpathians or along the shores of the Danube. That if we have great powers in the world today who profess that they are fighting for the liberties of small nationalities, and if that these powers are not sincere in their professions, that we shall do our part to tear the mask of hypocrisy from their faces. Let us not be afraid to love Ireland with all our hearts today, nor to give free voice to our love. 
But Donna Van Rossa was not afraid to do so when it was much more dangerous than it is now. He was indeed banished from Ireland for his love of Ireland. And today, banishment from Ireland is one of the penalties of love of Ireland. Let his spirit be amongst us. Let us try to emulate his courage. Let us be fearless. All over Europe, men are laying down their lives for love of their country. And shall it be said that Irishmen are the only men in Europe who are not prepared to risk danger, trials, and sacrifice through the love of their old historic land? Let us be united. We cannot have absolute unity. It is not to be found in any country. But at least, let us have substantial unity. And there is no reason why we should not lift up our hearts in hope for the future and believe that the coming of the remains of heroic O'Donovan Rasa amongst us may be the starting point of a new epoch in the history of Ireland. Oh, never fear for Ireland, boys. For she has her soldiers still. It has seemed right before we turn away from this place in which we have laid the mortal remains of O'Donovan Rossa that one amongst us should, in the name of all, speak the praise of that valiant man and endeavour to formulate the thought and the hope that are in us as we stand around his grave. And if there's anything that makes it fitting that I, rather than some other, that I, rather than one of the grey-haired men who were young with him and who shared in his labour and his suffering, should speak here, it is perhaps that I may be taken as speaking on behalf of a new generation that has been rebaptized in the Fenian faith and that has accepted the responsibility of carrying out the Fenian program. I propose to you then that here by the grave of this unrepentant Fenian we renew our baptismal vows. That here by the grave of this unconquered and unconquerable man we ask of God, each one for himself, such unshakable purpose, such high and gallant courage, such unbreakable strength of soul as belonged to O'Donovan Ross. Deliberately here now, we avow ourselves, as he avowed himself in the dock, Irish men of one allegiance only. We of the Irish volunteers and you others who are associated with us in today's task and duty are bound together and must stand together henceforth in brotherly union for the achievement of the freedom of Ireland. And we know only one definition for freedom. It's Tone's definition. It's Mitchell's definition. It's Ross's definition. Let no man blaspheme the cause that the dead generations of Ireland served by giving it any other name and definition than their name and their definition. We stand at Ross's grave today, not in sadness, but rather in exaltation of spirit, that it has been given to us to come thus into so close a communion with that brave and splendid Gael. Splendid and holy causes are served by men who are themselves splendid and holy. O'Donovan Rossa was splendid in the proud manhood of him, splendid in the heroic grace of him, splendid in the Gaelic strength and clarity and truth of him. And all that splendor and pride and strength was compatible with a humility and a simplicity of devotion to Ireland, to all that was olden and beautiful and Gaelic in Ireland. The simplicity and holiness of patriotism of a Michael O'Cleary or an Ono Brownie. The clear true eyes of this man, almost alone in his day, visioned Ireland as we of today would surely have her. Not free merely, but Gaelic as well. Not Gaelic merely, but free as well. And now, we are in a closer spiritual communion with him than ever before, or perhaps ever again. In communion of spirit too with those of his day, living and dead, who suffered with him in English prisons, 
in communion spirit also with our own dear comrades who suffer in English prisons today. And speaking on their behalf, as well as our own, we pledge to Ireland our love. And we pledge to English rule in Ireland our hate. This is a place of peace, sacred to the dead, where men should speak with all charity and with all restraint. But I hold it a Christian thing, as O'Donovan Rossa held it, to hate evil, to hate untruth, to hate oppression, and hating them, to strive to overcome them. Our foes are strong and wise and wary, but strong and wise and wary as they are, they cannot undo the miracles of God, who ripens in the hearts of young men the seed sown by young men of a former generation, and the seed sown by the young men of 65 and 67 are coming to their miraculous ripening today. The rulers and defenders of this realm had need to be wary if they would guard against such processes. Life springs from death, and from the graves of patriot men and women spring living nations. The defenders of this realm have worked well in secret and in the open. They think they have pacified Ireland. They think they have purchased half of us and intimidated the other half. They think they have foreseen everything. They think they have provided against everything. But the fools, the fools, the fools, they have left us our Fenian dead. And while Ireland holds these graves, Ireland, unfree, shall never be at peace. The moon beaming on strong manly forms. Her eyes with hope gleaming, I'll see them again. Sure to all my sad dreaming. Glory oh, glory oh, to the Bolfinian men. Some died near the grandside, some died near the stranger, and wise men have told us their cause was a failure, but they stood by old Ireland. I never fear danger. Glory, oh, glory, oh, to the bold Fenian men. I passed on me way, dropped the train that I met her, be lifelong or short. I will never forget her. We may have brave men, but we'll never have better. Glory, oh, glory, oh. 